Hi everyone and welcome back to Warno. Today we're going to do some deck building. This is the 5th Panzer Division. Now having managed to do some testing, play a few games with the units, I'm pretty comfortable in building a deck now and trying to point out which units are good at what. So the first thing to say is obviously there has been this rejigging of the supply vehicles. My advice is to take the Mancat 6x6 Mun, it works out the best value, and I'd take both cards of those. They only come in as trained anyway, you get three, you get six in total. I would next grab your command unit, I would take these guys because one card gets you four of them. And then, other than that, you could then consider bringing in some more vehicles. The obvious choice for me being this one, just the smaller truck, you do get ten of them. So, you've got three points worth there in terms of activation. So, whether you want to do that is completely up to you. It is obviously getting quite expensive at that point. It depends how much you think you're going to need supply. Are you playing 1v1s? Are you playing team games? Are your allies going to have trucks as well? You know, there's a balance here as to whether you think you can get supplies from your teammates or if you're just going to be doing supply yourself in 1v1s. And how long you think the 1v1s are going to last is another thing to consider. So that's kind of an individual thing. I'm going to leave it for now and stick with the six we've already got and move on to infantry. So in terms of infantry, you've got quite a wide selection. Now the truth is this, the Marda is king right now. The Marda is devastating to infantry. It will damage vehicles if it gets close enough. Its missile is really good, so you can hit vehicles and tanks at range. You're going to want Panzer Grenadier Marders, definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. Other things we want to consider first, obviously, are a commander. You have a choice of three here, and I like to go with a couple of things in my head. So one is I want them to have a bigger strength if possible because they're going to survive a couple of hits longer. I'm not necessarily wanting them to defend themselves, but on the chance that they can defend themselves, for me, I think the Panzer Grenadier Fuhr are the best here. Now, yes, you only get three of them compared to the four Jaegers. However, they have a red eye. Now, often with commanders, if I'm leaving them in a back point, I will have stingers or something placed around them, something to defend them versus chopper rush. These guys can technically defend themselves. Yes, it's a red eye, so it's not very accurate, but it'll be enough to scare some people's choppers off. So don't underestimate that. So for me, actually, I'm not really bothered about them having a machine gun. I'd rather they had the red eye. So I'm gonna add these guys. In terms of a vehicle to bring them in, well, I mean, you've got a range of choices there. They are already quite an expensive unit. Are they going to be near enough the front lines to make it worth bringing them in in a Marda? Probably not most of the time. The Marda would provide some extra defense though, if that's in your head. Rather than bringing in infantry to support them, it, it goes both ways. You can either bring in infantry to support your commander or you can bring them in in a Marda. Yes, the Marda's cheaper, but infantry is going to be more effective in a town than a Marda is. So for me, I'd probably be considering infantry over a Marda and just bringing these guys in the 15 point Iltis and then selling it afterwards. Now, the next thing I would grab are the Pioneer Flam. So these guys with the Hand Flam Patron are really good. Really, really effective. I would want as many of them as possible. You get six if you bring them in as trained with an accuracy of 39. And you get four if you bring them in with veteran and they're going to actually have 50%. The truth is, I think you can get away with 39% accuracy because it has quite a large splash damage, it seems. So I would get those. In terms of vehicles, why wouldn't you bring them in in the TPZ Fox right now? It's 10 points. Just there needs to be a rebalance and there is going to be a very quick balancing patch. I cannot stress that enough. The TPZ Fox is not going to stay 10 points. The tank on the East German side is not going to stay 70 points for a command tank. It's a mistake. This is all going to get corrected. 
The next infantry I would consider bringing, because you get nine of them trained, is actually the Armbrust. These guys did surprisingly well versus tanks up close. They have a rate of fire of 20 on that weapon. And you get nine of them. And they're pretty cheap. They still get their MG. They still get their G3A4s. They've got a strength of 10. They're quite a beefy squad. In a tree line or in a, a town where vehicles are going to try and come in, they'll be devastating. The rate of fire is crazy. They fired faster than I even expected them to fire. So, you know, for me, they're a really good unit. You can bring them in as trained, and they've got a 50% accuracy on that armbust. Or you can bring them in as veteran and increase that at 62%. But for the fact that they're going to be fighting stuff that's maybe closer than their maximum range even, I'd be inclined to bring them in as trained and just hope the fact that they're up close and personal makes a difference. And also the fact they're firing twice as fast as any other infantry is quite a nice bonus. Because if you click on the Panzer Grenadiers with their Panzerforst, their rate of fire is 10. It's half. So these guys, yes, less penetration, but pretty decent unit. I would bring them in as trained. I bring them in the TPZ folks. Now we've got another five slots here. The last one is four activation points. That's getting really expensive. In terms of other units, the Pioneers with the Satchel Chargers, we have discovered the Satchel Chargers are really good. So against infantry in open field, against infantry likely in forests as a result, and against infantry in buildings, they are more effective than the East's new flamethrowers. However, you have the Pioneer Flam here with the Hand Flam Patron. They're actually probably better than the Satchel Chargers because they have a better range. So of the two of them, I would stick with the Pioneer Flam. I don't believe you need the standard Pioneers. So for me, stick with the Pioneer Flam. Job done. Then you have plenty of Panzer Grenadiers. You have the Carl Gustav guys, which, you know, Carl Gustav's pretty good. It's got a nice long range, 885 meters, and a decent accuracy even at trained. And that's what I'm worried about here is accuracy on their anti-tank for this squad in particular. Their strength is only six, though. They're quite a small squad. Then you got the Panzer Grenadiers who come in at M113. These guys obviously have a strength of nine, so slightly higher. They only have the Panzerfaust 44, which is obviously slightly less penetration and range and slightly less accuracy, but still a decent squad. You also have the Panzer Grenadier Marders. Now, these are only a strength of five, but let's be honest, you're getting these guys in for the Marders because the Marders are absolutely devastating. They will wreck squads, they will wreck vehicles. They, they are really good right now. I think they're underpriced. I think their price will get rejigged possibly. Um, even if it's just by five points each, there's just there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. The truth is I'm gonna fill the rest of this deck up with Panzer Grenadier Marders. But I just want to take you through the other squads first and then come back to them. So another option you have are the Jaegers. They are an 11 strength squad, which is really good, obviously. Um, they have the Panzer Force, they have the MG3. Good squad, good strength. Now, I'd be comparing these guys to maybe the Panzer Grenadier M113s because they're in some ways a very similar squad. The only difference is... You know, you get trained only with the Aegis. So it's it's a personal choice. If you were planning to bring in the Panzer Grenadiers at Veteran, then obviously you have to go with those guys if you were going to do that than the Jaegers. But for me, they're a pretty decent squad with a strength of 11. And that does make a difference. An extra two members of a squad make a difference. Not just in terms of the amount of weapons they have, but in terms of their survivability. Now, the next thing I would take a quick look at are just these two up here, which I've kind of skipped over, which are the Field Jaeger. These guys have MP5s. They come as veterans or elites. Obviously, decent weapon. One thing I'm going to note that is quite important right now, I think, is that all weapons in the game need a bit of a rebalance because of their damage output. This is a four-man squad and the HE is 0 0.4. If I click on these guys who are 11-man squad, 
their HE is 1.1. That's because the HE damage on the G3A4 is the same as the MP5A3 because it's 0.1 for each weapon. And that's the same for all the weapons, so... Just trying to look for something that's got a different one, but I think they all have G3A4s. Oh, there's a there's an Uzi. You get five of them, 0 0.5. Right now, they need to rebalance guns. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing squads. The information that's here is probably correct. And they've just sort of put a blanket number down for every weapon in the game, regardless of the millimeters of their bullets or whatever else. So just keep that in mind uh, these guys I think are really good they're very spammable infantry they only have the G3A4s they don't have any anti-tank these are your anti-infantry infantry to spam in a forest to spam in a town to absorb fire because they have a strength of 11 while your flam patron take out the enemy troops or your panzer grenadiers take out the enemy vehicles they're basically something that are there to absorb fire. So you send them in first and then the other squads behind them and hope that the other player is just attacking whatever comes first and not really paying too much attention. Am I going to put them in this deck? Probably not because I just don't think right now they're worth it when I can have so many martyrs for so cheap. So that's everything else we've had a look at. Let's have a look at the Panzer Grenadier martyrs because that's what I'm going to add to this deck. They can come in as trained, veteran, or elite. Yeah, great. You can bring them in as trained, and for them themselves, I honestly don't think it makes too much difference. They have a decent accuracy on all their weapons. If you increase them to veteran, then they get a bit of increased fire rate, which is a weird thing to get on the machine gun, but fair enough. And then, you know, you get a bit more accuracy on the Panzer Force and everything else. The Marder Milan obviously changes its accuracy of the Milan based on how trained it is. So if you get trained, you get 50%, 62% at Veteran, and then up at Elite, you get 75%. Having a more accurate missile is beneficial, but you drop the numbers you can bring in by three. So I'd probably consider bringing in Veterans of these, and I'll actually add two to my deck of the Marder 183 Milans. Bear in mind that the 1A3 has the same armor as the BMP3, which is pretty darn good. So that means I've got 12 Panzer Grenadier squads with the fancy Marders, the Milans. Now, they're 75 points, and they're not the cheapest. You could then consider bringing in something cheaper. You could bring in the standard Marder. You could bring in the Marder 1A2. I would consider bringing something in now with higher availability. So bring them in as trained so you get nine. And then just have a look at what you want to spend. You could indeed bring in more 1A3s for those Milans as well. And just basically have a bit of a spam fest going on. Uh, you could bring in something a bit cheaper and reduce your price right down. So. You know, we could add these guys in with the Mardo 1A2, which just has the gun and the machine gun. Still going to be very useful. It's a bit of personal choice here. I would like something a little bit cheaper to bring in. So I'd probably consider bringing in the standard Mardo 1A3 just to have something a little bit more spammable. And then, do you fill the rest? I'm going to. I'm going to fill the next one at least. I might leave the four activation points, because... That's a lot of activation points to spend on it. So let's go with... Do I go really cheap with the Mardo 1A2? I think for the extra few points, it's five points to go from the 1A2 to the 1A3. I might just bring in nine of these as well. A sort of something that's... A bit more availability or do I just bring in some more veteran ones I'll just bring in more veterans that'll do that'll do it's difficult they have a lot of good infantry but it's it's the martyrs that are just that good 
Let's move on to artillery. So quite a reasonable choice of artillery here from testing. The Lars fires so slow. Now it's going to be devastating if it hits, but if you're playing against someone who is remotely sensible and doesn't panic under fire, they're going to move their units out of the way because of how slowly it fires. So I'd actually consider bringing in some standard artillery if you're going to do it, because at least they're a bit more accurate. They have a big blast radius. The Mars, again, it fires fairly slowly. It has a nice big HE blast, even bigger than the uh, Howitzer, but it's, it's a difficult one. I, I was disappointed with the Lars and how it fires. It's too predictable. The Mars is going to be the same. You're relying on someone not paying attention. I think that's the difficulty right now. You're relying on someone not paying attention to what's going on. The issue with the M110 is that it only fires two shells at a time. And it can only be brought in as a single availability per card. Which isn't ideal. The M109 has a lot less HE so you're going from 2.33 with it and the howitzer the big big bad boy has 3.05 it depends how you want to play the game it depends what you think is going to be most effective I'd honestly stick a couple of these in so I have four of them and I can just provide counter battery fire with them more than anything else I probably would potentially use them to soften up a front line as well but I'd also stick some of these guys in so I can smoke. But other than that, I'd just move away from this tab. I'll spend the three single points. But while these could be devastating if they fired faster and their spread when they land wasn't going from left to right to confuse the enemy more, I just don't think it's worth it right now. Tanks are great in this deck. And from the testing, we can say that the M48 is actually pretty darn good. So, all I would do is get yourself a command tank. You've got either the Leopard 1A5 or the Leopard 2A3. Get the Leopard 2A3, look at the armor on it. It's gonna survive longer, so that's going straight in the deck. Uh, you only get one of them, so use it wisely. You could even bring in a second one if you wanted. Then we're going to add the Leopard 2A3s. Accuracy-wise, Look at how good the accuracy is and how good the accuracy of motion is. 87, 104%. So that's ridiculously good. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that rate of fire changes, I would probably bring these guys in as trained. But the fact that rate of fire changes to plus one and then I could boost them to elite and get a total of plus four rate of fire with the command tank. I think I'd be going with Veteran for these. Now, it's a difficult one because they're an expensive tank. And you're going to want something cheaper in there. But I'd actually get all three cards of those. That gives you 12 Veteran Leopard 2 Air 3s. Very good tanks. Decent armor. Decent penetration. They're very, very accurate for what they are. Then I'd want to bring in something cheaper. Completely hating all the Jaguar 1 and 2s. They are far too expensive for what they are. Don't get me wrong, the Jaguar 2 has a Tor 2 missile. It's got a lot of damage on it. It's got a high accuracy. But 170 points seems like a lot for that unit. The Leopard 1A5 and the Leopard 1A1A1, 1A1, which is a ridiculous name, but fair enough. The difference here is the cannon. So if I pin this one and then we hover over the other one. They both have 15 penetration. However, the big difference here is the target ranges. So 2120 versus 2295. So you get a considerable increase in range. You also get a considerable increase in accuracy on that main gun. Now, both of them are veteran. But you'll notice that one is 50% and one is 81%. The gun is so much better on the Leopard 1A5, it's worth the extra 20 points to me. Obviously, 
might be that other people don't feel the same, but personally, I think it's worth the extra money. That said, the 1A1A1 has a lot more spam ability. You get more of them. But you only get one card of each, so you could actually add them both to your deck. And the truth is, I probably would. What I am going to quickly jump to, however, is the M48. This was surprisingly good. So if we just shoot up, you get 39% accuracy on trained, 50% accuracy on veteran. You still get six of them, or you get nine of them. I think six is enough. I would stick that in my deck. I honestly thought that would be absolutely useless when I first looked at these units, but having tested it, it's pretty good and managed to dodge a lot of fire somehow, miraculously, if you've watched my testing video. If you haven't gone look at it, especially for the M48, it was, I don't know, it, it, it seemed to be like dodging shots. Uh, otherwise, yeah, grab yourself the Leopard 1A5. Personally, I like that one because of the increased range on the gun and the increased accuracy. This is a tank deck. Grab yourself the 1A1A1 as well. Something cheaper, something to spam against those cheap T55s. And other than that, you could potentially bring in another command tank for those two activation points. I'd probably do that, just in case you lose one, because they're going to be a high value target. Okay, so in terms of recon, uh, it's a difficult one. There are no exceptional optics in this deck. You have a lot of infantry, and all the infantry now has very good or less optics. Stealth exceptional, obviously, and you have the alouette, which is very good optics. It's a personal choice here. I like infantry because I can get them pretty close to the enemy usually without them being noticed, especially with their weapons turned off. Veterancy doesn't appear to make a huge amount of difference in this game to the optics and things. Obviously in Wargame Red Dragon it makes a difference to their target acquisition so they can see it and to tell you exactly what it is faster than one that isn't as well experienced. Here it doesn't seem to make a difference. So, just in terms of squad size, that's a strength of 4, that's a strength of 11. For the simple fact that that is a strength of 11, I would go with that. You only get one card of it, but it's going to survive longer if it does get spotted. And then you've got the Fern Sphere. They have the Satchel Chargers, they have the HK21. It's all a bit meh. They get 6. They're quite expensive, but you do have the option of bringing them in in a chopper, so if you do want to get round behind the enemy. The problem is, they don't have any anti-tank, whereas the Alf Clara do, and you can have a chopper with them as well. So honestly, although their strength is a little bit less at four, I would bring in these guys. You know, whether you bring them in a veteran is up to you. They get a little bit better accuracy on their Panzerforst, but... Personally, I just go with train so I get more of them because I'm going to mainly use them for scouting enemy positions. Do you bring some in in a chopper as well? Again, you'll notice I'm just picking TPZ Fox here because it's so cheap. Uh, you could consider bringing them in in a UH-1D. You know, for getting around behind enemy lines if you so wished. That's a personal choice. Uh, the same with the Alouette too, if you are comfortable with choppers and, you know, playing carefully with them and babysitting them, then that's probably a good choice. Currently I've only got 12 recon and I don't think that's enough, so I would either be taking more of these guys or taking the Alouette too. I might stick the Alouette too in because I know most people would actually do that. And having a recon chopper is very useful you can just park it over a forested area at the edge of the map to protect that side and give you a good line of sight but let's move on to anti-air anti-air is not the best thing when it comes to the fifth panzer division unfortunately you want to have the red eye which are pretty crappy you get the jeopard which is decent but it's range versus aircraft isn't great and it's radar you get the roland 2 which is obviously very nice 
it's got a decent accuracy even at trained its ranges aren't great however it is not radar regardless of the fact it's got a whacking great big radar on it this is not a radar unit so i would definitely take those whether you increase them to have 81 percent accuracy at veteran and only have four is completely up to you you only get one card of them so honestly for the fact that 65 percent anyway i would just take trained at least they can't be hit by seed planes the roland three again 65 percent a much better range do you take veteran of these so you get f only four if you do that but you do get 81 percent accuracy there's so some argument for saying that that is better because they're going to have more chance of hitting that jet that comes over rather than having to have the weapon turned on constantly because it is radar you will have to babysit this unit but honestly for the fact it's 65 percent and you get six of them i'd rather have more than less because they're going to get killed even if you're very careful with them, eventually someone's going to drop bombs on it or hit it with a seed. Otherwise, are taking the red eye better than nothing? Potentially, but even at elite, they only get 52% accuracy. The rate of fire is pretty poor. It's really difficult. I would always take a stinger. I would always take an igler. And I'm just I'm really struggling with the red eyes because I think man pads are very useful but if they're just gonna miss all the time I'm not convinced Jeopards are radar it's a decent unit put out a decent bit of damage ground targets so so helicopters decent range not great certainly aren't gonna outrange their missiles aircraft pretty poor accuracy not great but spag is still pretty good that's the general term for these anti-aircraft gun platforms i mean i kind of want to add something else than just these 12 because i just don't feel like it's enough so i'm going to add the jeopards trained so at least i have four of them but yeah it's that's very difficult bear in mind that they have been changed they're no longer hit regardless and track across the entire map they will miss that target now then we've got helos completely personal choice if you want to bring these in there are situations where these guys will be very useful they have 24 penetration with the hot two it's got a good range against an enemy with heavy tanks and not enough air cover they're going to be very useful so you you know you could stick them in and you do get four if you bring them in trained you can increase their accuracy and just have two. I just bring them in as trained and have four of them. But, you know, it's a personal choice. I'm going to skip the helicopters and come back to it. I want to see what air I bring first. So the first thing to say is I'm going to take the Tornado IDS MW1 because it is great against infantry. It is great against small vehicles with like one armor and it will wipe infantry and buildings out. It is one of the only bombers in the game that can do that relatively quickly and easily. It is very accurate, so I would add that. Then you've got the cluster bomber, and you do need some kind of cluster bomber in the game at the moment because everybody else has them, and this is the only one you get. There is absolutely no reason not to bring it in train so you get two of them. There is an element of air spam in this game right now. It is unavoidable. One of the main tactics with the East German side is spamming T-52s and while, you know, bombing all the expensive tanks of your enemy. Other than those two, I mean, certainly grab the seed plane. Debate originally was whether it was worth bringing in the uh, veteran ones rather than the trained ones. But from our testing, just bring in the trained ones. No reason not to. In terms of what else is available to you, you've got this reasonably nice anti-tank with the maverick decent range i would probably stick that in just so you have something against the tanks accuracy isn't great but it has four missiles so it can do a second pass you can increase that accuracy to 50 percent with veteran and only have two of them or have elite at 60 percent i actually again would just bring in trained do a pass and then do another pass if absolutely necessary bit of babysitting with that jet and being careful when you bring it in because it will have to fly at the enemy lines 
unless you're babysitting it very carefully and bringing it in from the side. You get a side armor hit on a tank with that thing, the tank is dead. But most of the time, people bring them in directly towards the enemy front lines and they hit the front armor on the tank. If this hits the side or back, the tank is dead and it will fire two missiles in a pass. So as long as one of those hit, you're fine. Obviously, 40% accuracy doesn't mean one of them's definitely going to hit, but reasonable chance. And then you've got this bomber with the three bigger bombs. I'd honestly take the carpet bomber if you're going to take one. You get 12 of the bombs. Bear in mind that in the testing, the F4F HE bomber, you have to aim behind your target or it will drop it on the troops that you have in front of them. Or indeed, just the empty ground in front of them. So something to keep in mind. And again, you know, trained is absolutely sufficient for those. Now, we're sort of at our maximum for what we can bring in for aircraft there. And you'll note that I haven't brought in any anti-air. Now, there is an argument for having anti-air jets. But in this deck, your choice is the F4F or the F104G. And neither of these jets have a long range anti-air missile they are close range fighters and neither of them have anything above good air optics and increasing their rating doesn't change that you can increase its agility by bringing it in as elite but no increase in optics no increase in range obviously it's sort of up to you whether you drop one of the bombers and bring in some anti-air and ASF. I personally would just stick with all the bombers and hope that I'm playing in a team game and uh, my allies are going to bring in some ASF. But uh, yeah, it is a difficult one. So I've got three points left. There's the option of a chopper. There'll be the option of more anti-air. There's the option of more recon. I could bring in another tank, which is probably what I'll do. RT, it's two points, so I'd be wasting a point. Infantry, I can't do that. Logistics, I could bring in some more munitions. Some more supply. Honestly, my choice would be between the tank and the recon. More recon is always a good thing. It depends how long a game is going to last and how careful you're going to be with your recon. The other option is the tank, but the only thing I have left in the tank deck is another command tank. Or the Jaguars. I think I'd bring in some more recon. I think I'd get a squad of these. And I think I'd bring them in in a chopper. And I think I would... Would I bump them up to veteran? 68% accuracy on that Panzerfaust. What I'm thinking in my head with this is... I want to get behind enemy lines. I want to kill commanders. I want to kill artillery. That's sort of what's in my head. So yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get... These guys, they're going to be exceptionally expensive. I'm only going to get four of them. And 115 points to bring in. They are my hit squad for taking out RT. They are my hit squad for taking out command vehicles. Potentially command infantry. Harassing the enemy behind their lines. So, looking back through the deck logistics, we have the Mancat for our supply. We have two of those cards, which is all that's available to us, with three in each card. So six available in total. We have the four availability of the command vehicle, the just the little Iltis. Infantry-wise, we've got the Panzer Grenadier Commander. We have the Pioneer Flams in a TPZ Fox. We have the Pioneer Ambust in a TPZ Fox. Both of those squads coming in as trained. Then we have the Panzer Grenadier Marders. I've selected to bring in three squads at Veteran. And one squad, again, with the 1A3 Milan as trained. It hasn't changed the price. It just means they're slightly more spammable. They're just not going to be as accurate. Now, honestly, there's so, some argument in my head for switching them all to trained. And just saying, well, even in that situation, at least the accuracy is 50%. And that would give you a lot of infantry for a uh, Panzer deck. Let's leave it as trained and see how effective they are. It doesn't change the price. It just means we get a lot more available. 
Moving on, we can have a look at our artillery. So we've got the M109 times two, which gives us four in total availability. And then we have the mortars. This is a personal choice. I just don't think the Lars on the Mars fire fast enough that an efficient enemy wouldn't just be moving their units out of the way right now. Tanks wise, we have two of the, two of the Leopard 2A3 command tanks. We have all three cards of Leopard 2A3s brought in as veterans. We have the M48 brought in as veteran and the Leopard 1A5 and the Leopard 1A1 as again veteran. Basically almost every slot filled here except the last one. And that's purely because I brought so much air. Recon. Bit of a personal choice here. You don't have a l great selection. I certainly just wouldn't bother with the looks. I mean, that's quite disappointing to only have good optics. So we have the Jaeger Aufkull because of their strength being 11. They have more survivability. We have the Aufklara because they have a Panzerforst, whereas the Fernsparer only have the Satchel Charges. These guys in a TPZ Fuchs again because it's so cheap. I'm sure that will be getting patched soon though. I've taken the Alouette. I don't always take a Recon Chopper because I'm notorious for getting them shot down. However, most people will want that and they do have a lot of versatility compared to, you know, a squad of infantry like that. I've also taken the Alf Clara as an extra squad, slightly ranked up to Veteran and brought in in a chopper. This is for a unit getting behind enemy lines to kill vehicles, command vehicles, artillery, things like that. And yeah, your choices aren't the best in the world, but you can definitely take the Roland 2 because it's not radar. I would definitely take the Roland 3 and just babysit it because it is radar. And I'd take the Jeopard 1A1 just because they're pretty decent. But again, they're radar, so you have to babysit them. The Red Eye are just incredibly inaccurate and a bit disappointing. So I haven't bothered putting them in. Helicopters, it's completely your choice where you take helicopters in this deck. I just don't think they're good enough to outrank taking extra infantry, for example. Aircraft wise, the problem with this deck is they don't have any good fighters in the grand scheme of things. They don't have any long range missiles. They're all pretty up close and personal dog fighters, if you want to call them that. You can either have the F-104G or the F-4F. I haven't brought any. I've just gone for bombers and anti-tank. So we've got the IDS MW1. We've got the cluster bomber. We've got the F-16C seed plane, just so we have a seed. We got the F-4F anti-tank and we have the F-4F HE all brought in at the lowest rank possible. So we have as many as possible because air spam right now is king. Well, that's the deck. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Stay tuned. I will be doing a deck for the East German side, and I'll be putting up a few gameplay videos playing with these decks. Have a great week.